Hello, nerds for Yang. Nerds for Yang. We have a special co-host today. What's your name, sir? Brandon. Brandon is my son, and he asked to be in this week's video. Normally, we we've been doing a lot of the state of the race, comparing polls and social media trends and things like that. For this week, we're going to do a policy deep dive, and we're going to focus on the topic of climate change. So we'll compare the policy positions of uh, Andrew Yang on climate change. But before we go into that, we are going to first answer the question like, is climate change really a problem? Try and share some data and facts. And then we'll look into if it is a problem, what is Yang's solution? And then we're going to look at Biden, Bernie, Booty and Harris and try and figure out what um, their positions are on this on this topic. So if you're new to the channel, which most of you uh, are or you're not subscribed, please hit that subs button, the big beautiful red subscribe button. That helps the channel, convinces my wife that it's worth making these videos because mama doesn't like us spending too much time on these videos. No, she doesn't. But we have to do it to save America. Okay, first question, is climate change really a problem? I went to the nasa.gov website. So this isn't some um, bleeding heart liberal website. This is the site of the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, the NASA site. And they have a whole section here on global climate change vital signs for the planet, and I'll link below, it's uh, nasa.gov. Some of the things that they call out is the amount of carbon dioxide uh, per million over 400,000 years ago to today. And what you'll notice is there are ebbs and flows where around 300 and maybe 25,000 years ago, it was 300 parts per million, and then it came down, and then around 250,000 years ago, it got up to maybe 280 parts per million, and then went back down. And then about 125,000 years ago, it bumped up to 280. But the current level is 400. So it's the highest level of carbon dioxide ever, or at least for the last 400,000 years, which seems like a pretty long time. And it's not just like a little bit higher, it's gone from 300 parts per million in around uh, 1950 to 400 uh, parts per million now. So at a minimum, we now know that there's a lot more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Now you might say to yourself, well, whatever, I don't care. I can breathe fine. I don't, I, so what that there's 400 parts per million instead of, you know, 300 or whatever. No big deal, right? Drill, baby, drill. So now let's look at global temperature. So Ooh. this is not carbon dioxide. This is just sort of like the Global Land Ocean Temperature Index. Oh. What do you think about this one, That Brandon? looks like really complex. Yes, it is complex. Do you think the temperature is rising or oh. flat? Over the years, it goes up and down. Mm-hmm. And then and he... now it's rising a lot. Yeah. So over the years from 1880... To 1940, it was pretty stable. Then it jumped up in the mid 1900s. And then, then it came back down. But then, starting around 1980, it's now been on a continuous rise. And if you think about the the sort of temperature anomalies, it's pretty noticeable that uh, we're not on a trend where it's flattening. It actually just keeps going up here is a time series of the temperature. Yeah, the difference in temperature over time from 1884 to 2018. The blue is sort of negative uh, four degrees Fahrenheit, and then the reddish orange is plus four degrees Fahrenheit. Now you might be thinking like, well, whatever, like who cares if it's from negative four to zero or zero to plus four. You know, one analogy that any parents out there know is like when you take your kid's temperature, a couple degrees makes a big difference. It's a difference between they can go to school and they have to stay home and, and they're, they're, or maybe have to go to the hospital. 
And so with the planet, uh, we're seeing from 1884 to 2000, you know, Ooh. almost a, oh, looks really like a really eight right. degree kind of change in, in average temperature. And this is, this is not, again, this is not from so like Greenpeace. Hot. This is not from, you know, the World Wildlife Foundation. This is from NASA. I know, right? So we know, so we know temperatures going up. We know the ocean temperature is going up. We know the overall planet temperature in Fahrenheit is going up. Arctic sea ice. So you might be thinking, well, you know, like what else is, is indicative of the planet warming? And what you see here is from 1980 to present the amount of millions of square kilometers of observed satellite observed arctic sea ice so people say oh you know the ocean temperature is not rising here you see from 1980 it was very typical to see around seven million square kilometers of arctic ice in september and now around 2019 it's about maybe 4.7 million from from so it's almost half of the arctic ice if we're on this path we're gonna go probably down to like two and that seems like a, a direction we don't want to go in and here's a visualization Ooh, of, this one. you want to see this one yeah of the arctic ice. Uh, ice in september year by year and the thing is, as you see this mass get smaller and smaller, a lot of things change. It changes the temperature of the ocean. It also changes the sea level. Uh, we were actually visiting Venice and they were saying like, yeah, consistently every year it keeps going up. Um, and at some point, if you live near the coast, which a lot of us do, that's gonna be an issue. And if you don't live near the coast, you're gonna get a lot of coastal people moving into your area. And so there's that. So you might be thinking, well, NASA, Schmassa, that's full of a bunch of uh, Ivy League coastal scientists, liberals. Mm. Boo, right? Mm -hmm. So I found this report by the Department of Defense. So the U.S. <laughs> Department of Defense, not a bastion of you know, kind of pinkos and, and what have you. This report was published in January of 2019, you know, under the, the Trump administration. And I'm just going to read you a couple of lines to kind of um, try and underscore the point that a lot of reputable sources uh, seem to think that climate change is not, not a hoax at all. Background, the effects of a changing climate are a national security issue with potential impact to the Department of Defense missions, operational plans, and installations. To achieve these goals, the DOD must be able to adapt current and future operations to address the impacts of a variety of threats and conditions, including those from weather and natural events. Climate-related events, recurrent flooding, drought, desertification, wildfires, thawing permafrost, now, why would we have more flooding, more drought, more deserts, more fires, and more thawing permafrost? I would imagine it's not because the temperature is going down. I don't think that the uh, Department of Defense would identify 79 installations that are potentially vulnerable uh, to these issues. So I'm not gonna go through e each of them, but maybe I'll just talk about the flooding. Coastal flooding may result from storm surge during severe weather events. Over time, gradual sea level changes magnify the impacts of storm surge and may eventually result in permanent inundation of property. Increasing coverage of land from nuisance flooding during high tides, also called sunny day flooding, is affecting many coastal communities. I will link to this report below, but suffice it to say, based on NASA, looking at uh, global temperature, sea temperature, Arctic ice, based on the US military study of impact on bases from droughts, desertification, flooding, wildfires, thawing permafrost. Let's just assume for this video that climate change is like kind of a real thing. 
So now your next question is probably like, okay, well, what's Andrew Yang going to do about that? If this was useful, please subscribe, like, and share this video because even though it only took us 20 minutes to shoot, we're going to have to go a few hours of editing now. Yeah. So um, please subscribe, like, and share. It keeps us motivated. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We just started a petition to get Andrew Yang on the Hot Ones, which, if you're not familiar with it, is a... Yeah, you should totally watch it. It's it's done by it's done by a channel called First We Feast, and this guy Sean Evans interviews people as they eat hot, increasingly spicy hot wings, and he's done it with like huge celebrities. He's done it with Neil deGrasse Tyson. He's done it with uh, big YouTubers like Casey Neistat. He's done it with you know amazing actresses and actors. He's done it. Uh, but he has not done it with any presidential candidate. So, and in my opinion, in my opinion, oh, Yang be. would be perfect. Why? Because he is the he is the candidate of the internet, of the people. Mm -hmm. Number two, he's not so uptight. He's he'll do it. The Yang will go on that show and he will go the distance. You better if you get on that show, Andrew. You you go all the way to the. Are you sure he's gonna be doing that? Yeah. Because because Andrew knows that. Do you think he's gonna be able to make it? I think so. Okay. I mean, he says he's he's used to spice. Well, he says he's used to weird food growing mm -hmm. up with Taiwanese parents. Yeah. The problem is the Taiwanese. No offense to the Taiwanese, are not known for their ability to handle spicy food. Mm -hmm. So maybe the Yangster mm -hmm. will not go all the way. Maybe. We'll have to see. So if you would love to see Yang on the Hot Ones, and I guarantee you, like, Hot Ones, they typically get millions and millions of views per episode. Some of them have, like, over 10 million views, I think. Huge exposure for the Yang Gang to get him on there. So even if you haven't watched the show, go check it out. You'll love it. Link below. Um, but then sign the petition. Sign the petition. So that we can pressure Sean Evans, First Week Beast, and Andrew Yang, to get together and talk about securing the bag over some wings. Wing wings. Do you like wings? Wing, yeah. Yeah, me too. Okay, so I think that covers everything. Oh. Thanks again. So subscribe to make sure you get the first to notify. And I also do a post to the community tab yeah. uh, in the middle of the week. Only people who subscribe get notified. So that's another reason to subscribe. A lot of reasons to subscribe. <laughs> With that, are we going to end with the Nerds for Yang chants that we, we, we yeah. came up with this morning? Yeah. Nerds for Yang. 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 All right, see you guys next week. Keep it real.